if you are wondering what supplies you should get this uh, school year for your toddler you don't have to go to Walmart and look for a sheet or you don't have to look for uh, Target to get your school supply list the idea is that today we're going to be talking a little bit about art supplies specifically in terms of art and creativity so no matter what toddler curriculum you decide to do what type of activities you are deciding to head over uh, we are going to get started so first of all let me know if you can hear me okay I'm testing a few things oh I forgot to put this hold on you should let me know if you can hear me better I'm in the garage trying to hide away from the family uh, but I did gather supplies I even have I came prepared I even created a list so I don't forget anything uh, so let me know if you can hear me okay I know there's a few of you that have signed in uh, and then we'll just get started because um, bring some paper some pen bring your questions and let me know in the comments how old is your little one so that I make sure that I customize uh, our conversation um, in terms of your child's age because supplies do tend to differ uh, between the age groups uh, but we'll talk about that so I see some waves I say hello I'm assuming you can hear me okay I can hear you okay great so then let's get started um, let me know how old is your little ones just to make sure that I know uh, we're gonna be talking about one-year-old two-year-olds three-year-olds mostly uh, but if you have uh, different ages let me know I'm trying to look for 18 months and five three year olds and one okay I'm trying to look for my notes because I made a note this morning I last last year last year last week I did kind of sat down and wrote my best like must haves that I have seen that, that I use over and over and over throughout the years both at home in the classes so I will there's a million things you can get, but we are going to just talk about, oh, there's a hair. Basically, like the must-haves, right? Like there's other activities that you're gonna encounter with that are gonna ask you for specific supplies. But today we are just going to cover like the most common ones so that when you go shopping to the dollar store, to Walmart, to Target, uh, even to the grocery store, you know kind of what to look for and to see if it's something that you want to uh, work with so let's talk about basics so how do you set up your area to do art so there's basically three things you want to have you want to take care of your floor so you can have a curtain like this is just a, a curtain you can have a towel even though towels I think they're a little too small but things that have worked for me are something that I call the messy mats and these are mats that you put under your high chair to catch like the spills. Those are great if you've been to my classes, you know, the messy mats, they're, they're not very big. Or you can just use like an old sheet, old crib sheet or like a, if you go to a thrift store, they have a sheet and I usually cover my tables or my floor with that. And that way you are more likely to enjoy the art activity and you're not so worried about like, is she like putting paint in the carpet? Is this gonna come off? Um, so you want to make sure that you kind of set up the environment there's uh, for my first year of art activities when Manu was about one I did I'm gonna show you I grabbed a container and this is an under the bed storage container and you put the baby right into that big container and you put the activity there and that way they're a little bit contained so you put the mat you put the baby on top of it you know inside of it and then you keep it um, still so let's talk about uh, paper because for me paper is very important you don't want to use the thin paper from your printer you want to use I like from my old art school and journaling you want to you want to look for what's called mixed media so mixed media means that you can put any type of art 
medium into it. You can color, you can do crayons, you can do paint, you can do watercolors, you can put stamps, you can, and they're heavier, like they're thicker than regular paper. So if you do paint and then you put stamps and then you glue paper on top of it, like that paper is gonna be able to hold it. So for my one year old, I want you to go big. When they're one, they're still like getting custom and used to their own area and their own space. So if your little one is one, between 12 months, 17 months, let's just say that. Um, go big, like this is, let me see, what size is this? This is 18 by 24 inches. Um, and this is actually, I mean, I, I, I usually been through one of these like every three months because um, what is great about this one is that when you put it on the table, it is the size, if you have the IKEA table, not the sensory table, but the other one, the smaller one, this paper is the size of the table. So you really don't have to take care, of, like cover your, pa your table because this will kind of take care of it. So they'll have the whole space to get creative and to do art. If you think that's too big, um, that's fine. I just found this size. It's an 18 by 12. This one's from the $5 store, but this one's a sketch. So it's a lot thinner, but I did, I did buy it uh, because I liked, it's kind of half the size. And then if you really just can't find them, uh, Walmart has these or Michael's. It's called Mixed Media Extra Large, and these is a nine by 12. So it's a little bit bigger than a notebook, uh, but still good enough. I don't know why it's tilted. Um, so just make sure, that I think the important thing is that you look for what's called mixed media and get a notebook that you can buy the loose leaf paper and just do that as well. They have, you know, really smaller sizes, but I really don't recommend them for like this age. Um, this is like what I used to use in my old days. So they have like squares. Uh, so these are great to have like different ones if you want, but you know, go big at one and then at two, you can do the t uh, 12 by 24 and then threes, they are a little more in control of the space and their little small hand movements, they'll be able to do uh, the smaller ones like the nine by 12. So now that we have, we have our, our, our area covered, we have our paper that we're, we're gonna work with, let's talk about paint and paint is really i just think there's like very basic ones that you can get and you really can't go wrong so i always recommend to have watercolors and those you can have the palettes from the dollar store that have like three or four colors uh the crayola brand the ones that you actually see on sale right now uh from the school supply section that have i think it's like eight colors that is also great uh you just really want to have access because there's a joy in dipping your paintbrush into water and then finding the color and then mixing it all around so it's just it's a great experience so i do definitely recommend you explore using that my ultimate the one that i use the most is washable paints and this i brought you different ideas so mm. If you want really heavy pigments, Mama. ¿Qué pasó? You, you could, if you want to have really like dark pigments, uh, the coloration brand, it's really good. Um, I usually just buy, I think this one's from Target and I've used it and this one's from the dollar store. So they also sell washable paint, but the only really is the washable paints from the dollar store do have um, they are very watered down so you have to do layer after layer um, so I definitely I would avoid this if if I can I wouldn't have this as my first choice um, but definitely just regular watercolor the Crayola brand is really good colorations it's amazing um, so that is fine I'm 
let's see let's keep moving so oh you want to have an apron or a smoke so for my little little ones that are just getting started into painting I suggest the ones that have sleeves so those little aprons with sleeves Ikea sells them Amazon has like a great package that you get two of them and so so just kind of to protect your clothes or have like a at the school where I used to teach they have um, oversized t-shirts and that was like the t-shirt they would use to just paint it was like a uh, like an extra large kid size for the toddlers uh, so it's just a large t-shirt that they can do I don't like them because when you they go down like the whole t-shirt comes down so I usually like the aprons uh, the best and uh, the dollar stores in you know you can find some in there they don't last that long like the, the stitching you know after a few wears they it'll wear off but they're a dollar so you know I have you I'm using those for the classes too so they are they come in great colors so you know have something that you know they're get ready to get paint and the washable paint usually get comes right off when you do wash it in in the washer um, so don't be afraid always make sure like you also get dressed for the occasion because they're not the only ones that are gonna be painting they're gonna painting with you and they're gonna want to hug you after they have paint all over themselves so that's uh, in we got paint we got paper so let's talk about markers and crayons must-haves um, and when I talked a little bit about this on our live last week we want to make sure we have dual dots. These are like a gift from God. They don't spill and they're like little markers and they'll just stamp. So if you go like that, like they have like, you can do little marks or they can use them, you know, to paint around. These actually have scent. Uh, so when he was one, he used to live with his nose in different colors because he would love to figure out you know the blue ones smell like blueberry and this is like green apple so they were a lot of fun another fun like if you see that at the dollar store or think walmart they have the big rolls of craft paper the ones that you just roll out on the floor and you just let your little one you know go at it so we used to do those a lot Markers, regular Crayola washable markers like the thick ones, like these. You know, just get yourself a little box. Um, these are, are fun and they're not very expensive. And when it comes to crayons, hold on. I had the egg crayons. So for my one year old, you want to look for the, there's some, they're, they look like an egg and I had them here it ready okay they don't have it so they look like an egg and you want to use those crayons uh, because their hands are so little they can barely grasp it right um, th and they're non-toxic so they're gonna try to eat them and that's fine because um, you know they don't taste good so they won't even try it and then what I do really like to and these are not easy to find so you really have to either get them online or really look they're called jumbo crayons and these are thicker and bigger than a regular crayon. So these are a lot easier to handle for our little hands. Remember, our toddlers do not get their hands developed, you know, for, for writing until they're like six or seven. So we want to give them supplies that actually are going to help them. So get those. Um, there's these little magic sticks. Oh, there's a new thing I, I found and let me know if you have questions or if you want me if I'm going too fast uh, these are paint sticks so they're actually paint but they are like a little crayon stick and these they go in as paint so there's a very famous brand and they, it's so soft they, they, they're, they feel like oil pastels uh, so it's definitely a different texture and one of our favorite things to do. They are, there's a brand called Chunkies and Chunkies, um, they're like $25 the box. I found this set, uh, which I just dropped half of it, at Publix. <coughs> 
and they were six dollars so I did order the chunkies to see if the quality is a bit better than these these kind of tend to melt away a little bit if, if they're pushing it too hard uh, but these are a great option to also have especially for my two and my three year olds that are already kind of liking the feel of holding a pencil All right, let's talk about paint brushes. So, for paint brushes, I swear I have, oh, you know why? Because it's here. See, I was missing a box. These are the, the crayons that I was telling you for the ones. They are a little, they, if you Google egg crayons, um, this is what they look like. And we use them a lot, and we barely, I mean, we barely made a dent into it. So let's talk about uh, paint brushes, right? We talked, we have paint already, we have our paper, we are ready to set up, we have our, our mats. So which paint brush should we look into? So first of all, for my one year old, you should be use, using your hands, your, just use your fingers. Um, you know what, I forgot to add something. Oh shoot, bueno, it's okay. Um, so, hold on, give me one second. I want to see this. So, paint brushes. IKEA has a set. It's like four of these. And I like these because they are chunky. And these are like bigger ones, right? You want to avoid these. And I'm sure you have seen these. They're like skinny and they're hard to grab. And I mean, like, look how little, look, look how little the hand movement and the detail you have to be to be able to use this paintbrush. So I say altogether avoid these even when you buy your art kits um, to paint like a birdhouse or something they'll often come with these. Av just avoid. Grab yourself some of these from Ikea. The dollar store has some chunky ones as well. <coughs> I don't have it. I think I was using them. I, those are the ones I use in class. But then think beyond paint brushes, right? What else can you use to paint? So you, they, you can use your hands, you can use sponges, you can use rollers, you can use, they, they sell these little sponge kits and makes little flower imprints and the stick is thick and heavy, so that is fun. Uh, you can use like wands, this is a set from, uh, from 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 Walmart no I got it at Learning Express but Amazon also has them and it comes like different textures for the ones to grab and what you look into so look at the handles like it has a big handle so that's always fun you can use cars to paint like the some cars with like big wheels like the monster trucks from the dollar store are great or if you have um, already cars with like big wheels those are fun so think beyond paint brushes sometimes um, you can use leaves, you can use flowers. Uh, we have used that in our nature class, so we paint with flowers and with leaves. Um, so that's when it comes to that. You can get th these, there's like six for a dollar at the dollar store, these little uh, dabbers. And this way, if you're not comfortable with paint as a mom, I get it, <coughs> not everybody is, you can start with little quantities. Like you don't have to give them like a big load of paint just to get started. You can just give them just a tiny bit and they'll be happy. They'll be happy to be able to just dip their paintbrush and then um, use it around. So that's gonna be fun. Let's move on to, we did paper. Let's move about, you know, glue and crafts. So let's talk about, you know, all those Pinterest crafts we see. First of all, ditch them all, most of them. Uh, try to focus on on just process art you know like I'm gonna show you this was puffy paint um, you'll never see this on Pinterest but he's exploring and look he's using most if not all of the space and that's what you want you want them to be able to just move their hands and their arms to, to express themselves um, this was a guided activity that we did together uh, this was during COVID so it is um, you know, I was painting up here 
and then he was painting down here so you want to just 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 think about like exploring materials let me see if there's anything it's not really about the craft like you know learn about colors so just give them purple and it's purple week and it's all about purple and just explore see this was an old one i do have like all of my notebooks you know this was a mixture of it's stuck we did a mixture of paint so i see some fingerprints here this has the dua dots and i see some crayons so oh and i see some stamps apparently it was christmas time so we were playing with stamps so you don't have to like once you use the page you're done like you can go back another day and add to it and you know that's kind of basically what our journaling is you just mix different materials over and over so let me know if you have questions about paint if not we'll move on to other tools I see hearts, so I'm assuming that is happy people. It is very hot in this garage. So let's talk about my two-year-olds. Because that one, all you want is a lot of finger painting and you want a lot of that hand movement. But for my twos, I will give you some homework because your job this year is to master what eventually is going to become your scissor skills so you are not going to be focusing on this leave that to the threes but i do want you to get droppers because this movement is gonna do um it's gonna strengthen those hand muscles that are going to be needed later on when they learn how to use the scissors you're going to want to master tongues by picking one thing transferring to another so a lot of activities tongs these are from uh, dollar store but these are from my kitchen so these open a little big bigger so um, also fine just be careful on this part that they don't pinch themselves um, but other than that never seen it happen but I'm always worried and um, you can use these type of scissors they don't have any sharp edges they're from it's called my first scissors <clears throat> from Crayola and you can cut um, you can cut uh, play-doh with it uh, so it's kind of like a easy soft practice and then this one it looks very much like scissors right uh, but then it's easier because you're not cutting and trying to focus you're just grabbing and letting go grabbing and let it go so these ones are from learning express but i've seen at the dollar store they have them in yellow um they have them in in a kit for like the bugs uh but this is a great one they're not very good in in um in quality not these or the dollar store so they will tend to break um to so get two <coughs> let me answer some questions is there edible paint how do you keep a 17 month from trying to put paint etc in their mouth so in that case if they're still like putting things in their mouth i would do a lot of things with um edible paint so easy ways to do edible paint you can get uh, yogurt just baby yogurt and add a drop of food coloring and then you can have different ones and then they can paint and then they can eat it you can do if if you don't want to encourage the good tasting of the of the paint you can do a mixture of cornstarch with water and food coloring and that is uh, they call it chalk paint because you actually can uh, paint with that outside in your in your pavement um, and then these are you know usually they're non-toxic so you can always try to say no and then give them something to hold, right? Like maybe if they use a chupi, like a pacifier, maybe they have that in their mouth while they're painting or you give them lots of supplies so that they're more interested in the supplies. They are going to put things in their mouth because that's how they're learning about the, word, the world and that's exactly how, you know, they're f that's, the, that's like their first senses. 
Uh, so I encourage you to do lots of, of sensory play that's edible. Uh, even before if you want to jump into kind of the paint. You can do a puffy paint uh, that's edible and all you do is you do the whipped cream, the you know, the one from like for the ice cream and you mix it with food coloring. So that's kind of like a puffy texture. If your little one is not taking things in their mouth, you can use it with um, shaving cream. So you can do shaving cream and food coloring that will make you some puffy paint. Uh, and if you want to save it, you know, that puffiness, you add a little bit of glue. Um, so if you feel like, oh my God, this child just is constantly nonstop putting things in their mouth, is because they need to explore the world a little bit more with that. They need to go outside and get dirty. They need to know what a leaf tastes like. They need to know how the grass feels under their feet. Uh, so just look for a lot of edibles you know activities you can do lots uh, with jello I mean it's not art it's more sensory but you can do unflavored jello with food coloring so add food coloring to your list um, because that's like I use that all the time for everything and I know there's natural ways that you can do your own food coloring you can boil carrots and that's gonna give you that yellowish color you can do it with beets I honestly use it so much and it's just so little quantity that I use that I just use the store bought. So uh, I, let me know if that answers your questions and gave you some ideas. Uh, so you can still do art even if they're putting things in their mouth. Another great favorite, favorite activity, you can do it with washable paint or you can do it with edible is buy sprinkles, you know those sugary sprinkles and add it to the paint and just let them paint with their hands and it is the most amazing texture you won't be able to really save your project because I mean it's just sugar uh, but it is like a really fun texture and they'll be able to like pick the little stars and it's just it's it's very intriguing to them and it's like a lot of fun uh, so I see hearts that means it is helpful okay awesome 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 sauce so let's talk about scissors. So once they are ready to, you know, cut paper with scissors, and you can see them handling pretty well. Usually, you would you would see when they handle this pretty well, and they're starting to look for paper. They want to be a little more challenged. Uh, you're gonna want to transition to toddler uh, scissors. And when I want you to look into scissors, first, don't buy them at Amazon. I haven't really found a good price. Um, I my go-to are the dollar store and you can go to the dollar store uh, website and get them or you can go to the teacher section at the dollar store and get them and what I love about this first of all you can get them wet you can get them dirty you can get them like it's just they're very good um, they're very very good quality for a dollar store item but what you want to look into is these tabs so if you don't have a dollar store next to you or uh, you know you can't find them just look for scissors that have this tab okay I never knew what that tab is right here you're cutting like this but look what happens when I lift the tab it like bounces back so when they're learning that bounce back it's really really helpful for them and is gonna avoid a lot of frustration so once they master that, then you can take the tab off and they'll be able to just cut. Cut paper, cut leaves. Don't worry about cutting like the lined paper. You know, we're not in preschool yet. We're not in kindergarten. We don't need to cut in zigzag. We basically just need to be able to, you know, cut. And then the challenge is to cut like this, right? Like an alligator, yum, 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 from the back to the front that's gonna be you know kind of your challenge and you're gonna see because when they start and you give them play-doh have any play-doh here they'll be like they'll cut like this or they'll like grab it like if their tongues because right we've been working with the tongues so they'll try to act like their tongues and then they'll cut paper and you know paper you but you can cut paper like this right but that's I mean it's gonna be hard so what you're gonna end up wanting to teach them is to just have that front motion and I call it the alligator like um, yum, yum. you know it goes forward um, 
So that's in terms of tools. Let me know if you have questions. I'm trying to clean up my desk a little bit so that I have more space to what's coming next. And I only really have two more tips for you. So let me know if this is at all helpful for you. Um, fun things to have are cookie cutters and this you can use them with play-doh you can use them to stamp you can use them with the slime uh, so cookie cutters are a great add-on you can get them on sale you can get seasonal ones you can make uh, we, you can get uh, what's it called it uh, you can make cookies together sorry I'm getting distracted um, and a lot of the things and I do have a collection you don't have to have that many as me is you want to have ice cube trays like I just got numbers ice cube trays for our sensory box for next month I had these are from the dollar store these are flamingos these are silicone hi buddy these are silicone uh, and these the advantage of the silicone ones are that some of them are they're oven proof so you can do your own crayons with this. You can put them in the oven. You can make, um, oh, I forgot, like clay, you know. But these are fun to do all types. Like you can play with Play-Doh, you can do water, you can, you know, put pom-poms inside with your sticks. So, you know, go into the cell section from time to time, just see what they have, even the square ones. Um, you know are great to have like I have these little apples for fall so you can go really crazy with when it comes to um, ice cube trays but you know have some available even if it's just like the square ones those are fun but shapes are always way funner and talking about cookie cutters I, I want to talk to you about play-doh because play-doh it's a lot of fun and there are some edible recipes. I do have a confetti edible recipe if you want to. If you have a little one that puts everything in its mouth. But Play-Doh is still fun. I wouldn't do Play-Doh before 18 months. They really don't They really don't care for it in my experience. Uh, but once they pass that 17, 18 month and they're a little more interested in squeezing the Play-Doh, you can do what everybody in Pinterest call is called a Play-Doh kit. And you probably have seen people sell these. Uh, I think they sell you like little themed Play-Doh kits for like $30. Um, I just have a generic one that I made. So this box is from Ikea. It's called the Gliss Box. And what I do, and the Play-Doh I rotate. Right now I have just store-bought Play-Doh because we got a kit. And what you want to have is you want to have Play-Doh. You want to have some type of cutter. So there's a kit on my Amazon store that you can see. It has little cutters that you can use, little knives. Um, you can have little, little creatures. So like you can theme these. Like if it's Christmas, then you can make it you know red and green and little snowman or you can keep it generic it really it's up to you but like I have little um, ocean figurines for this one so I have a little um, and I got this at a trip from like a, these are kind of too little um, but look I have a I have a little snowman and this is a mini eraser I have a little snowman I have a fish just random little pieces you want to have some little cookie cutters, right? Like these are just small. You can have our big ones. And these are buttons, giant buttons or straws. Straws are favorite to stick into Play-Doh. Um, so you want to do that. But my biggest trick when it comes to Play-Doh um, is we always do Play-Doh on a tray. We don't do Play-Doh straight to the table. The Play-Doh will crumble. It'll fall on the floor. It'll go everywhere. Always, always, always Play-Doh on a tray. So find a shallow tray. This one's a set from Amazon. You can find it in my Amazon store. It's a set of three. And we always do Play-Doh on a tray. So if he wants to play with Play-Doh or slime, 
he knows he has to get the play-doh kit and a tray and this is going to contain where they are playing and somehow it reduces the mess like they get in their mind that this is where the play-doh goes and they will experiment throwing it but all you just have to say is play-doh in the tray play-doh in the tray other fun but not required things are you can do play-doh mats so these are little guided activities I think this one is our fall theme uh, so they will just roll the play-doh and put it around um, we have the shape ones as well this one's from the um, curriculum for the two-year-old so we have circles squares triangles so these are always fun to kind of add a little bit of learning when it comes to play-doh um, but always play-doh on a tray so let me see if I missed anything let me know if you have questions um, oh glue glue and crafts so school glue the white school glue I uh, take advantage that they are on sale now because it's back to school so just grab a few bottles otherwise you'll pay twice as much in the next few months and googly eyes googly eyes are a must have I love the ones that have um, already the stickers like they have sticky in the back so these are see they have all different sizes uh, and this is they're fun to just you know create so you can give them for Halloween you can give them green paint they can go at it and then they can add a few uh, googly eyes and then you have a monster it's like a freestyle uh, art there's no wrong there's no right it's just freestyle there's always right um, things I don't use a lot are pipe cleaners haven't been able to like figure out to love them to use them I have them by the millions and I don't use them that much and then um, glitter I use it basically when I do sensory bottles uh, when we do art sometimes but you know it's just it's it's not a, a, a must-have I would say right now uh, that's it I, I went through all of my notes display oh display your art I have here display your art you know that shows your little one they are important that you care about their art their creativity that it is something that we uh, want to promote so put it in your refrigerator buy put two nails like I have two nails a string and some uh, laundry hangers and that's where we put our um, our art and then we just rotate them and then whatever we're not using it I put it on a binder a binder I save it and one thing I love about this is that it's already saved right like this is manual this is from last year uh, and I have a few of them like we painted with cars and here you can see a little bit of the wheels um, so date your art because I would love to, like sometimes I do, you know, we used apples last year to stamp. So, save your art. You know, so, you know, at the, at the moment it'll look like nothing. Uh, but when you go after it, you know, it'll be, it'll be nice to, nice to see. Let me see if there's any cool stuff in this side. See, this one's the one I, I have this one over the easel. So we don't always do chalk, sometimes we just do paint and stuff. See, we're starting to learn how to freehand writing skills, so learning how to do the X. That's a milestone right there. Um, that's it. I mean, now I have a big mess of art supplies I have to clean up. But that's that's what I have. Uh, oh, feathers. You can use them for gluing. It's good for like the fall season. You can do, um, you know, little arts and crafts, but I, Honestly, never seen a bird with a red or purple feather. Uh, I would rather use regular ones. Uh, but that's that's it. Do I have a message? No. Nope. Someone wants to come online. So that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. If not, then the next live we will do next week is how to create an activity schedule. If you have your little one every day, 
with you or if you only have them you know on the weekends because you work too much in the you know during the week we'll talk about the schedules we'll talk about the curriculums and the activity uh, binders that we have uh, to kind of give you a head start and I think that should get you ready for back to school so I hope this was useful for you uh, I hope that you got some ideas uh, you can go on the website kidactivitieswithalexa.com slash well actually if you go to that first blog post you'll see a lot of the links directly to what we talked about so we have the paint and the papers and the scissors and all of that stuff so you can um, grab them from Amazon right there and there which obviously if you buy anything from my website it does give me a commission which is uh, always helpful but not needed but helpful I mean who doesn't like to get a little ching ching um, and it doesn't cost you anything extra so that's it for now I gotta go back to my mommy duties but uh, always leave me a message send me a message if you have questions if you're at the dollar store and you're like I don't know where anything is I don't know what to get send me a message I'll help you through it I'm always helpful here to help you spend your money in some arts and crafts and kids stuff so until next time I'll see you around thank you for watching and thank you for coming and I'll see you in the next Alexa show <laughs> bye bye